Let's ignite the world with the spark of our attitudes, because believe me when I say, your attitude isn't just a part of your journey to success. It is the very path you walk on. It is the fuel that propels you forward. It's everything. Have you ever found yourself standing on the brink of your dreams, peering into the vast expanse of your desires, yet feeling like there's an invisible barrier holding you back? That barrier, my friends, isn't built by the world around you. It's constructed from the bricks of doubt, fear, and hesitation within you. But what if I told you that you hold the power to demolish this barrier? Yes, you do, through the sheer force of your attitude. Your attitude is everything. Fake it till you make it. Now hold on, before you jump to conclusions about the word fake, let's unravel the true essence of this powerful strategy. It's not about deception, it's about setting the stage for your success. It's about embodying the spirit of your dreams even before they materialize. It's about dressing for the role you aspire to, not the role you currently play. Let me share a story that encapsulates this essence perfectly. Imagine a young individual, much like any of us here, armed with dreams so big they scare him. Yet there's a fire within him, a fire to make something of himself. But here's the catch. His current reality doesn't align with the future he envisions. What does he do? He makes a pivotal choice. He decides to walk, talk, and act like the success story he aims to be. And guess what? The universe starts aligning with his newfound demeanor. Opportunities don't just knock, they start banging on his door. Why? Because he chose to fake it, to live and breathe the success he sought until the act became his reality. Now, you might wonder how this is relevant to you. Let's face it. Each one of us has been at crossroads, faced with the choice of retreating into the comfort of our doubts or marching ahead with confidence. How often do we let the fear of failure dictate our actions? More often than we'd like to admit, right? But here's a thought. What if we chose to see beyond our doubts? What if we decided to act with the confidence of the victor, even when victory seems like a distant dream? Faking it till you make it isn't about pretense. It's about faith. Faith in yourself. Faith in your potential. Faith in the journey towards your dreams. It's about adopting a winner's attitude even when the scoreboard suggests otherwise. Because in the grand scheme of things, success is as much about the journey as it is about the destination. It's about preparing yourself mentally and emotionally for the success that's yet to come. Throughout history, the greatest achievers weren't those who never faced doubts or fears. They were those who refused to be defined by them. They understood a fundamental truth. Success starts with what's inside you, with the attitude you bring to the table every single day. So as we gear up for the journey ahead, ask yourself, what's holding me back? More importantly, ask, what would I do if failure wasn't an option? Let's embark on this exploration together, delving into how a shift in attitude can turn the impossible into the inevitable. Remember, it all starts with you. Your attitude isn't just a small piece of the puzzle, it is the puzzle. Your attitude is everything. Let's dive into the heart of the matter, the very engine that drives the train of success, your attitude. When we talk about attitude, we're not just referring to a fleeting emotion or a temporary stance. No, we're talking about the very bedrock of your personal and professional existence, your attitude. Believe it or not, it is the compass that directs the course of your life. It's the inner voice that says, yes, I can, even when the entire world whispers, no, you can't. Now, let's unravel the magic behind the mantra, fake it till you make it. This isn't about donning a mask or playing a part that feels alien to your true self. It's about embracing the power of positive pretense, a psychological lifeline that pulls you from the depths of doubt into the realms of possibility and success. It's about believing in the part of you that's capable of achieving greatness, even if that part hasn't had its moment in the sun just yet. Acting as if you have already achieved your goals sets a powerful psychological precedent. It programs your mind to navigate the world as a victor, not a victim, paving the way for genuine success. Consider the luminaries of our time, individuals who didn't just climb the mountain of success but reshaped its very contours with their perseverance and attitude. Take the example of a young woman armed with nothing but a dream to make her mark in the literary world. Faced with rejections that could easily dampen the brightest of spirits, she chose to wear the cloak of a successful author long before her first manuscript was accepted. Every morning, she sat at her desk, weaving stories undeterred by the pile of rejection slips. In her mind, she was already a best-selling author. Today, her books have not only topped charts but have also inspired a generation to dream. 
Her secret? She believed in her success and faked her way into making it a reality. Consider the inventor who was told time and again that his ideas were fanciful, unrealistic. Did he bow down to the naysayers? No, he walked, talked, and worked like the genius inventor he knew himself to be. His unwavering belief in his vision, his attitude, eventually led to inventions that changed the course of human history. His reality started in his mind, shaped by the steadfast attitude that he was already where he aimed to be. What these stories tell us is profound yet simple. The attitude you adopt shapes the life you lead. Fake it till you make it is not about deception. It's about setting the stage for your own success story. It's about living today with the conviction and confidence of your future self. It's about aligning your mental state with your aspirations, thereby making your goals an inevitable reality. So why is it that some individuals seem to effortlessly ascend the ladder of success while others remain tethered to the ground? The answer lies not in their circumstances, luck, or even talent, but in their attitude. It's their relentless drive, their unwavering belief in themselves, and their ability to fake their confidence until it becomes their second nature. Now, think about your own life. Where could a shift in attitude take you? Imagine for a moment that you are already the person you aspire to be, successful, confident, fulfilled. How would you approach your day? How would you tackle challenges? Embracing this mindset, this attitude, could be the catalyst for profound change in your life. Building a positive attitude isn't just a good idea. It's a blueprint for success, a formula that can transform your life from the inside out. So how do we construct this foundation of positivity? Let's dive in with practical, actionable steps that can elevate your mindset and set you on a path of unstoppable success. First, understand this. Your thoughts shape your reality. It's like planting a garden in your mind. If you plant seeds of positivity, you'll harvest success, happiness, and fulfillment. But where do you start? Start with your self-talk. The conversations you have with yourself every single day. Are they filled with hope and optimism or doubt and negativity? Begin to consciously shift this internal dialogue. Instead of saying, I can't, start saying, I can. Instead of dwelling on what went wrong, focus on what went right. It might seem small, but this shift can ignite a profound transformation in your life. Now, let's talk about visualization, a powerful tool in building a positive attitude. Imagine yourself achieving your goals, living your dream life. See it, feel it, believe in it. This isn't daydreaming, it's a strategic exercise in mental preparation. Athletes do it all the time. Before they even step onto the field, they visualize their success. They see the win, feel the triumph, and then they make it happen. You can do the same. Before you start your day, take a moment to visualize your success. What does a successful day look like for you? Hold on to that vision and carry it with you throughout the day. But visualization and positive self-talk are just part of the equation. What about the information you consume on a daily basis? This brings us to the concept of a mental diet. Just like your body thrives on nutritious food, your mind thrives on positive, uplifting content. Be selective about what you feed your mind. Choose books, podcasts, and videos that inspire and motivate you. Surround yourself with people who lift you up, not those who pull you down. Your mental diet can shape your attitude, your beliefs, and ultimately, your success. So here are some thought-provoking questions for you. What does your current mental diet look like? Are you nourishing your mind with positivity or are you letting in negativity without even realizing it? It's time to take control, to be deliberate about the content you consume and the thoughts you entertain. Building a positive attitude is not a one-time task, it's a continuous journey. It requires effort, persistence, and a commitment to growth, but the rewards are immeasurable. A positive attitude can open doors, create opportunities, and attract success. It can transform challenges into stepping stones and dreams into realities. As we move forward, remember, you have the power to shape your attitude, to choose positivity, and to create the life you've always wanted. Start today by shifting your self-talk, practicing visualization, and being mindful of your mental diet. These steps aren't just pathways to a positive attitude. They're the building blocks of a successful, fulfilling life. Remember, your attitude is the paintbrush of your existence. What masterpiece will you create with it? I'm here today to talk about something that affects us all at various points in our journey. The challenge of overcoming negative influences. You know, the world around us can often feel like a minefield of negativity. 
From the fear that holds us back, to the doubt that creeps in during moments of uncertainty, to the criticism that can sometimes feel like a relentless storm. But here's the thing. These negative influences aren't just obstacles, they're opportunities. Opportunities to grow, to strengthen our resolve, and to reaffirm our path toward success. So how do we navigate through this? How do we shield ourselves and maintain a mindset focused on growth and positivity? Let's start with fear. Fear is like a shadow, always lurking, ready to engulf us if we let it. But remember, a shadow only exists because there is light. Turn towards the light, your goals, your dreams, your potential. When fear whispers doubts in your ear, counter it with action. Every step forward, no matter how small, is a victory over fear. Now, doubt, it's a tricky one. It questions our abilities, our worthiness, and our decisions. But here's a strategy. Treat doubt as a signal, not a stop sign. It's signaling you to seek more information, to prepare better, and to strengthen your resolve. Let doubt drive you to become more, not less. Embrace it as part of the growth process. And then there's criticism. Nobody is immune to it. But remember, not all criticism is created equal. Learn to differentiate between constructive feedback, which can be a valuable tool for growth, and destructive criticism, which serves no purpose other than to discourage. Welcome the former, and as for the latter, let it roll off you like water off a duck's back. But how do you practically shield yourself from these negative influences? First, you rate your environment. Surround yourself with positivity. People who uplift you, content that inspires you, and activities that rejuvenate you. Your environment has a profound impact on your mindset. Second, practice gratitude. It's impossible to feel negative when you're genuinely thankful. Start and end your day by listing things you're grateful for. And third, commit to lifelong learning. The more you grow, the less space there is for negativity. Every new skill you learn, every piece of knowledge you acquire, builds your confidence and reduces the power of negative influences. Let me share a story that encapsulates the power of overcoming negativity. There was once a young artist faced with rejection after rejection. His work was criticized, his style was questioned, and his future in the art world looked bleak. But instead of succumbing to doubt and fear, he used the criticism as fuel. He dedicated himself to mastering his craft, to learning, growing, and evolving. Today, his art is celebrated worldwide. His journey wasn't just about overcoming negativity. It was about using it as a catalyst for personal and professional growth. So as you face fear, doubt, and criticism, remember, these aren't roadblocks, they're stepping stones. Use them to elevate yourself. Turn fear into action, doubt into growth, and criticism into strength. You have within you the power to rise above negativity and to carve out a path of success that is uniquely yours. Remember, it's not the challenges that define us, but how we respond to them. Keep moving forward, keep growing, and let your attitude be your shield against negativity. Let's dive into a powerful concept, one that can truly revolutionize the way you approach every aspect of your lives. Fake it till you make it. Now, I know at first glance, this might sound a bit superficial. But let's peel back the layers and really understand how this principle can be applied authentically across different areas of your life. From your career to your personal relationships, and especially in your journey of personal growth. In your career, fake it till you make it, is not about misrepresenting your skills or experience. It's about embodying the confidence and attitude of the role you aspire to. Think about it. How would someone in your dream position carry themselves? How would they tackle challenges or interact with colleagues? Start adopting those behaviors now. It's about stepping into a larger version of yourself even before you've reached that milestone. This approach acts as a magnet, drawing opportunities your way because you're already resonating with the energy of that role. In relationships, this principle can transform your interactions and connections. It's about embodying the qualities of the person you want to be in your relationships. Are you looking to be more understanding, compassionate, or supportive? Begin by faking these qualities, not insincerely, but as a practice. The remarkable thing is, the more you practice, the more these qualities genuinely become a part of who you are. It's about stretching beyond your current self to embrace and embody the qualities you admire. Personal growth is perhaps where, fake it till you make it, finds its most fertile ground. Here, it's about visualizing the person you aim to become. Someone who embodies resilience, adaptability, and unwavering positivity, even if you're not there yet. Start acting as if you are. 
Facing a challenge, ask yourself, how would the future, more evolved version of me handle this? This doesn't mean ignoring your emotions or pretending problems don't exist. Instead, it's about adopting a growth mindset even when you're tempted to fall back into old patterns. But here's the crucial part, balance. There's a fine line between authentic self-improvement and mere pretense. The key is consistency. It's not about putting on a one-time performance but consistently practicing these attitudes and behaviors until they become second nature. Resilience plays a huge role here. You're bound to face setbacks, but it's your resilience that will dictate whether you fake it only temporarily or truly grow into the version of yourself you aspire to be. Adaptability is your secret weapon. As you fake it, you'll encounter situations that challenge your preconceived notions of who you are or who you should be. Embrace these moments, they are opportunities to adapt and refine your approach, ensuring that your growth is not just a facade but a deep transformative process. Let me share a story that perfectly illustrates this principle in action. There was a young entrepreneur who dreamed of leading a successful startup. Initially, he lacked confidence, often second-guessing his decisions and struggling to lead. He decided to fake the confidence of a successful CEO. He adopted a posture of certainty in meetings, spoke with conviction, and made decisions with the assurance that would lead to the best outcome. Over time, something incredible happened. He didn't just appear more confident, he became more confident. His team responded positively, his decisions led to successes, and his startup thrived. He had faked his way into becoming the leader he always wanted to be. So, as we explore this journey together, remember, fake it till you make it is not about deception. It's a strategy for growth, a method for gradually transforming into the best version of yourself. It's about acting with the courage, confidence, and conviction of the person you aspire to be until you no longer have to act because you made it. And that, my friends, is the power of a positive, growth-oriented attitude in action. As we stand here today on the brink of forging ahead into our futures, let's take a moment to understand the essence of cultivating lasting change. It's about more than just fleeting moments of inspiration or temporary boosts of motivation. True transformation begins with the habits we form. The small daily actions that over time solidify into the bedrock of a positive and resilient attitude. So, for a moment, the power of habits. These are the threads that weave the fabric of our lives. Habits can either build us up, leading us toward fulfillment and success, or they can pull us down into the depths of frustration and failure. The beauty of it is that we have the power to choose which habits we cultivate. And it starts with cementing a positive attitude through deliberate, consistent practice. The journey from faking it to making genuine, lasting changes is akin to a metamorphosis. It begins with the seed of an idea, perhaps even a facade, an act of pretending to be who we want to become. But here's where the magic happens. As we practice this new role, as we embody the attitudes and behaviors of our ideal selves, these actions start to become second nature. The act of faking it gradually fades away, leading in its place the genuine article. We become the person we aspire to be, not through wishful thinking, but through deliberate action and persistent effort. But how do we start this process? How do we kickstart the engine of change and set ourselves on a path toward a brighter, more positive future? It's simpler than you might think. It all starts with one small action step, just one. Today, I encourage each and every one of you to commit to a single small action that will steer you toward a better attitude. Maybe it's starting your day with a positive affirmation, expressing gratitude for three things every morning, or dedicating 15 minutes to a hobby or activity that brings you joy. Perhaps it's reaching out to a friend or family member with a word of encouragement, or setting aside time each day to reflect on your goals and the progress you're making toward them. Whatever it is, make it something tangible, achievable, and aligned with the person you're striving to become. This small step is your foundation, the first brick in the road toward lasting change. And as you build on this foundation day by day, you'll find that the gap between faking it and making it narrows. Before you know it, you'll look back and realize that you're no longer pretending. You've grown, you've evolved, you've transformed into your best self. Now, not because you wished it into existence, but because you worked for it, one small step at a time. So, as we move forward from this moment, Let's carry with us the understanding that cultivating lasting change is within our grasp. It starts with our habits, with the small daily choices that over time add up to monumental transformation. 
Let's commit to that first small action step today and let it be the catalyst that propels us toward a future where our attitudes are not just positive, but powerfully aligned with our deepest values and highest aspirations. As we draw this moment together to a close, let's take a step back and embrace the journey we've embarked upon today. We've delved deep into the transformative power of attitude, explored practical steps to cultivate positivity, navigated through the challenges of overcoming negativity, and unwrap the essence of fake it till you make it. Each of these segments woven together forms a tapestry of insights aimed at empowering you, propelling you toward a future brimming with potential and success. Remember, the journey towards transforming your life begins with a single yet profound realization. Your attitude is the lens through which you view the world, the architect of your reality. By choosing to adopt a positive outlook, to speak to yourself with kindness and conviction, and to visualize your success, you set the stage for incredible transformation. It's about taking those practical steps, day in and day out, feeding your mind with inspiration and surrounding yourself with positivity. We've also confronted the specters of fear, doubt, and criticism head on, acknowledging their presence but refusing to grant them power over our lives. Instead, we choose resilience, arming ourselves with the shield of a positive attitude, ready to face challenges not as insurmountable obstacles, but as stepping stones to greater heights. And through it all, the mantra of fake it till you make it serves as a beacon, guiding us towards authentic self-improvement. It's not about pretense. It's about embodying the qualities of the person you aspire to be until they become an integral part of you. This journey from imitation to genuine transformation is paved with consistency, resilience, and an unwavering commitment to personal growth. So, here we stand at the precipice of possibility, armed with the knowledge and tools to shape our destiny. The question now is not if change is possible, but when will you start? The answer, my friends, is now. Today, this very moment. Every small step counts, every positive thought, every act of kindness towards yourself and others. These are the building blocks of the future you wish to create. So, let this moment be your call to action. Embrace the power of a positive attitude. Commit to those small, actionable steps towards positivity. Shield yourself from negativity. And step into the role of the person you're destined to be. Remember, it's the accumulation of these small steps that leads to monumental change. Before you know it, you'll look back and realize that you're no longer pretending. You've grown, you've evolved, you've transformed into your best self. Now, not because you wished it into existence, but because you worked for it, one small step at a time. So, as we embark on this journey, let's do so with courage, with hope, and with the unwavering belief that we are capable of shaping our lives into masterpieces of our own making. The journey ahead is filled with endless possibilities, and it all begins with a single step. So, take that step, embrace the journey, and remember, the best is yet to come. We're going to talk about the principle of service the key determinant of everything that happens to you in life. We live in a service economy, serving our fellow man or woman with the things he or she wants, which means that we all live by service, and that only by service can we survive at every level of our economy. Each of us is serving other people. Now, if you were a Robinson Crusoe and you lived on an island by yourself, what you produced would be what you consumed. In other words, if you wanted a fish, you would catch fish. If you wanted a hut, you would build a hut. But your production would equal your consumption. All the universe is maintained in balance, and what you put in, you get out in exactly the same measure. For every bit of effort you put in, there is a reward that comes out. For every good that you do, good will come out. For every evil that you do, evil will come out in complete and perfect balance. Wherever I've seen an unhappy, unsuccessful person in life, almost invariably, you will see a person who is trying to get on the wrong end of the law of sowing and reaping. They are sowing bad in their relationships, sowing laziness in their work, and they cannot understand why they reap unhappiness and frustration in their lives. In every single area of life, this law of sowing and reaping seems to explain with complete accuracy what is happening to us. We know that in the great flow of life, we always have to put the seed in first before we get the crop. And whatever seed we put in the ground, that's going to determine whether the harvest is going to be good. Whatever you sow in your relationships, you reap in your relationships. We know that children are largely the reflection of their parents' treatment of them. If you raise children with dignity, love, self-respect, praise, and approval, you will have positive, self-confident, happy, successful children. 
And if you criticize them, condemn, and complain and harp at them continually, you'll have children with low self-concepts, poor self-images, with a lack of self-confidence who will get into all kinds of troubles in life. Whatever you sow in your work, whatever you sow in your profession, whatever you sow in your business, you will reap in your rewards. The number of hours that you put in, the quality and quantity of service that you give to others will always determine your rewards. And if you wish to increase those rewards, as we say, you can always focus on what is under your complete control, the quality and the quantity of your efforts. Wherever you see individuals or groups who increasingly demand greater rewards for less service, you see the sowing of the seeds of financial and economic disaster. The winners in life focus on putting in as much as they can, knowing that the crop will always follow. Now, this is interesting because it's not the principle of sowing and reaping. It's not the principle of compensation. It's called the law of sowing and reaping. It is the law of compensation. It is the law of cause and effect. What it simply says is that the more that you put in, the more you will get out, by law, not by accident. Well, how does this apply to a business? For the purpose of a business is to create and serve a customer. How many people say the purpose of a business is to make a profit? But no, the purpose of a business is to create and serve a customer with goods and services at a price above the cost of production of those goods and services. And the result of successfully serving a customer with the goods and services that he or she wants is a profit. Clearly identifying your customers is one of the most important things that you can do in terms of increasing the value of your services. Virtually all market research is aimed at telling companies exactly who their customer is in an external marketplace. A manager, in effect, has three customers. The first customer is his boss, who has put him in that position. The second customer is his staff, the people who have been appointed to him to help him achieve the objectives of the function. And the third customer is the person who must use what you produce. At the very least, you must always satisfy this customer, the one who must use your work. You can achieve all of your goals in life if you'll just find enough different ways to achieve the goals of enough other people. And the more ideas you can have on how to serve more people better, the more ideas you have on how to enrich the lives of others, the more prosperous and successful you will be. The law of service says that we fulfill ourselves as human beings to the degree to which we lose ourselves in serving others, helping others, and improving the lives of others. Take us back, of course, to our principle of excellence, that you can only be successful doing what you do in an excellent fashion. I'm always surprised when I see companies that spend an enormous amount of money advertising to bring people in the door, and then have them served with indifference. And surely, serving people restaurants that spend an enormous amount of money to get you to try them out and then put little portions of poorly prepared food on the plate. It's absolutely amazing how much money is spent in advertising on the one end to get customers who try the business once and then go away and never come back. In fact, if you can become excellent in customer service, if you can become excellent at treating people like kings, then you can open almost any kind of business and you'll be successful. Remember, we're all in the business of customer satisfaction. The basic rule for starting a new business is and has always been, find a need and fill it. Find something that people need, find something that consumers need that nobody else is offering them, or find something that you can give to them that's better, cheaper, and faster in service. Remember, everything that you do in life that increases your ability to render useful service to others increases your value in the world. It increases the quality and quantity of the seeds that you are sowing, and it must eventually increase the quality and quantity of the harvest that you are reaping. The greatest men and women in history are those who dedicated their lives to service. In fact, true greatness only seems to emerge when you're totally absorbed in doing something that benefits other people. Anyone who thinks that they have an idea for a newer, better, faster, cheaper way to serve others is free to enter the marketplace and try. We are one of the few societies in the world where every time someone has an idea where they can serve customers with something that they need in a way that they're not being served already, they can enter into the marketplace and offer it. And whenever you see successful business, you should stand up and applaud because all successful business is based on somehow giving people something more than they had before. Most entrepreneurial fortunes began with a man or a woman who saw some need that wasn't being met, and who successfully entered the market and met it. Look at the success of the hundreds of thousands of men and women who have built great organizations and corporations in the last 200 years of American history, every one of them based on somehow serving others with things that they couldn't get before. 
All your wealth will come from productivity, from finding better ways to serve others. Dot. And the harder you work serving others, the more successful you will be. And the harder you work serving others, the happier you will be. The average self-made millionaire works over 60 hours per week. You can tell where you're going to be in 3 to 5 years by simply noting the number of hours you work. If you're only working 8 hours a day, you're simply staying in place. And heaven help you if the economy doesn't turn down and you lose your job, because then you sink very quickly. Remember, you've got to get into the top 20%, and it's a race, because the competition is becoming more and more fierce in our competitive society. You must work harder than the average to do better than the average, and much harder than the average to do much better than the average. And you must work hard, hard for years. The average age of self-made millionaires in America is 57, believe it or not, and most of those people made the bulk of their fortunes after the age of 40. Now, you can start when you're 20 and work very, very hard and develop an expertise and make yourself extremely valuable and you'll be wealthy a lot earlier. But it takes at least 20 years of unrelenting effort to achieve financial security in life. And the sooner you start, the sooner you accomplish it. And as you know, most people never start at all. A self-made millionaire was interviewed by Success Magazine a couple of years ago, and he was asked his secret of success. And he said the one secret that I can contribute is always do more than you're paid for. It's a well-known rule for financial success. Always do more than you're paid for. Always put in more than you take out. Always leave more value than you take out of it. Go the extra mile. Practice overcompensation. Put yourself on the side of the angels by working more and working harder, and working longer than anybody else. Go early, work harder, stay later, work weekends if necessary, work evenings. And if you can't work on your job, work on yourself. The harder you work, the luckier you get, said one self-made millionaire. And the better you get too, when you work hard, hard. You get better and better in your field. But if you don't work very much, then you don't achieve very much. Remember, the greatest joy and happiness in life goes to those who are fully engaged in work that makes a difference. Work that serves and enriches and improves the lives of other people. And finally, serving others, feeling needed and valuable, builds your self-esteem. It causes you to like yourself and improves every aspect of your personality.